Good day! I'm Dr. T and welcome to my office. Today I'd like to talk about simple machines. Simple machines are going to be uh, the simplest building block machines uh, that allow us to uh, do what we need to do. And so these are going to have, you know, maybe a few moving parts, uh, but they are going to be quite simple, quite straightforward. And there are six major types of simple machines. Uh, the first type that I'd like to talk about is the inclined plane. And this is going to highlight the two major things that simple machines tend to do. They allow you to redirect force so that you're not necessarily pushing or pulling in the direction that you would otherwise be doing so. And second, uh, they are going to allow you to gain what's known as mechanical advantage. And this is going to allow you to make a trade-off. Remember that work is going to be force times distance. And mechanical advantage is allowing you to exchange one of those for the other. So I could exchange having less force for a greater distance, or I could exchange having more force but over a shorter distance. And so with the in-kind plane, what you're going to be doing is presumably taking a thing and pushing it uphill. Uh, now this brings the first part. You're going up by pushing. So you're taking a horizontal force and you're using the in-kind plane to turn that into vertical motion. Uh, this has a couple of uh, advantages. For starters, uh, the inclined plane, as depending on how slick it is, obviously, but assuming you got a little bit of friction, is going to supply some normal force for you. So if I've got a box and I want to lift it up into the back end of the U-Haul, I've got to lift the box all the way up and put it into the U-Haul. I can't stop halfway, otherwise the box falls down. There's no normal force other than, you know, me. So if I've got an inclined plane, I can push the box part way up, I can stop, and I may have to supply a little bit of force, but I'm not going to have to supply the full normal force. The inclined plane will do that for me. Additionally, because it's supporting some of my normal force, I'm going to be able to push the box, and as the box goes up the plane, I don't have to push with the full force uh, of the weight of the box. Some of that is being provided for me by the inclined plane. But what am I exchanging? Well, if I lifted the box straight into the U-Haul, I have to take it up, what, two feet? Depends on how high your deck is. But with the inclined plane, I'm going to have to push that box over, say, six, ten feet, depending on the length of my ramp. Uh, so I'm exchanging not needing as much force for a longer distance. I'm doing the same amount of work. Work doesn't change. Okay, the next one I'd like to talk about is actually very similar cousin to the inclined plane, and that's the wedge. So this is basically like two inclined planes stapled to each other. Arguably, this is the oldest of the tools because an edge on, say, a knife or any kind of cutting tool is a wedge. Uh, so in this case, I've got basically the same story. Uh, now, quite often in this case, the wedge is actually going to be the moving part. So in the inclined plane, typically those don't move much. But with a wedge, this is going to be moving. So I'm going to take, say, a vertical motion uh, from, say, a nice maul, which is kind of a blunt, heavy axe that you use to split wood. And it's going to have a nice wedge part. And then I'm going to use this vertical motion. I'm going to transition that to horizontal. So I'm going to be able to hit that log and split it apart so I can throw it in the fireplace. Uh, and thus I'm able to, hey, get a redirection of force. Additionally, depending on how pointy my uh, edge is, uh, I can take the wedge and that's going to give me some mechanical advantage as I'm able to push down with a modest amount of force and it's going to be able to push out with a, with a greater amount of force, but I'm going to have to push further down into it uh, than what it's going to be pulling out. So if you look at, say, uh, you know, splitting a log, uh, you go pretty far into that log as you're splitting it. The log only goes apart a short amount. So you're gaining that mechanical advantage. Uh, the next one I'd like to talk about is also an inclined plane. Uh, you'll notice there's, there's this trend on how these are actually all very, very similar. Uh, this is the screw. So this is if you take an inclined plane and wrap it around uh, some kind of core. Uh, so, of course, we're all familiar with screws. You know, you, you screw things together with it. It's, it's a verb and a noun now. Uh, so, in this case, you've got an inclined plane. So, you're transitioning uh, what is, you know, this kind of vertical or, you know, going up and down compared to the plane. So, assuming the screw is going up and down. 
uh, you're taking this vertical force, uh, but you're generating it with a torque or a twisting force. So now you can turn the screw and this will then allow you to do an inclined plane that's basically going around in circles. So you're taking instead of a horizontal force, you're making this a twisting force. Okay, next type is going to be the lever. And levers actually come in a couple of different flavors because with levers, uh, it's actually very easy, depending on where you put the center part of the lever, the fulcrum, the point where the two ends balance on, depends on where that goes, depends if you are gaining a mechanical advantage at all. If you put it dead in the middle, right smack dab in the middle, you don't get mechanical advantage. You don't have any trade-off of force and distance. All you do is redirect the force. So a down force now becomes an up and vice versa. And sometimes, that is incredibly useful. Uh, you can imagine, you know, if you want to push really hard, it's easier to push hard going down because you have gravity to help you. Whereas if you want to push hard going up, not only do you have to push against the gravity, it's not helping you at all. <laughs> so you have to push you. Or if you're going down, you can use your weight to help you. Uh, but if you move the fulcrum uh, so that it's closer to the thing you're trying to move, then the distance that that end of the lever moves is going to move less than your end. So you're going to be able to gain that mechanical advantage. You're going to be able to put force on your end and you're going to use a longer distance. But on the other end, you're going to get more force out, but just not the length. If the fulcrum is closer to you, then it's actually going to be the opposite. So you're going to have to put on more force, but you're going to get more motion on that other end. So if you want to move something that's fairly lightweight, but also fairly, um, you know, fast, or you want to give it a good oomph. Now, of course, I've been saying uh, the thing you're trying to move, what we call the load, and you and the fulcrum are, you know, load, fulcrum, you. You can actually have the fulcrum opposite. Uh, the load. So it could be you load fulcrum or fulcrum load you. So you you know the order can vary. Uh, the closer you are to the fulcrum, the more force and less distance there's going to be involved. The farther away, the more distance, but the less force. Okay, the next simple machine is uh, really kind of like a round lever. This is the wheel and axle, not just a wheel though. Just a wheel doesn't really classify as a simple machine. That's really more of a friction uh, reducing device. So we're not talking little bogeys that just kind of roll. But if you have a wheel and axle, so you've got a big round wheel and then the center of that wheel, the part where it turns around is kind of like the fulcrum. And then you have attached to it what is essentially another wheel, but is smaller. So this is kind of like the other end of the lever. So as you turn the big wheel, uh, it will turn around further. The amount of circumference is larger. So when you pull a little bit on that, uh, then it doesn't rotate as quickly, but the little wheel, because it has less circumference, uh, is going to have more force on it. So this is very much like a lever, but it's kind of around with the fulcrum in the middle. And once again, you might very want to pull on the big wheel so you use less force but a larger distance. Uh, you can imagine something uh, like a winch being in this case where you know, you're, you're, you've got the giant handles, you're cranking on it and you're pulling up the really heavy thing. Alternatively, you could look at a bicycle. The pedals that you pedal on are much smaller than the wheels that actually drive the bicycle. So you're putting a lot more force on but the wheel is turning faster and therefore you're moving quicker. Uh, and you actually change your mechanical advantage on your bicycle by shuffling where the uh, chain goes on the gears. You know, it's on a bicycle, you've got a couple different gears, they're different sizes, and by selecting which gears attach, which is uh, kind of you know, a variant of this wheel and axle idea, uh, then you're able to uh, change your mechanical advantage. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is the pulley. And so a pulley actually comes in a couple of different uh, descriptions. Uh, a simple single fixed pulley uh, is incredibly useful, but doesn't give you a mechanical advantage. So in this case, you take a pulley, which is basically a wheel with a rope on it. Honestly, you don't even need the wheel. Uh, a slick piece of wood works fine. You're taking a rope or a chain or something uh, that is able to pull and you're looping it over something. For a simple fixed pulley, you know, imagine a tree and what you're able to do is you're able to pull down on one end and the other end goes up. You're redirecting it, uh, which can be incredibly powerful. But the interesting part is with the pulley, and this is kind of going back to that bicycle thing. 
Um, if I put more than one of them, or if I use what's known as a mo uh, mobile pulley, so where I tie off my rope on one end and then it goes through the pulley and then I hold it, I'm able to split the load between the different ends. And so by being able to do that, as I'm able to pull on the pulley, uh, I'm going to have to pull the rope more because I'm going to have to pull all that rope through. Uh, so I've got more distance, but in turn, I have a greater mechanical advantage. I get to exert a lot more force. Uh, of course, the classic thing you, you think of is what's known as block and tackle. In this case, you've got lots of pulleys uh, all working together to really give you this wonderful mechanical advantage uh, that's able to just move really big things. And of course, this is, you know, how cranes work, etc. Uh, so the last part I'd like to talk on uh, when coming to this is kind of transitioning this into another idea. So mechanical advantage is specifically dealing with work. Now, of course, you know, work deals with energy. So adding energy to a system. Uh, typically, when we're increasing distance, what we're also really doing is increasing time. Uh, so, you know, we're pulling on that rope. The longer the rope is, the longer it's going to take us to pull on it. So when we're thinking about energy or work being done per unit of time, so how much energy we're expending or taking in, ergo, the amount of work being done, uh, once we start thinking that in terms of time, that's what we call power. So something that's powerful is able to do a lot of work very quickly. Uh, not necessarily has a total amount of energy. Uh, so if you look at a, stick, a Snickers and a stick of dynamite, the total amount of chemical potential energy uh, is actually greater in the Snickers. Uh, but the chemical reactions that undergo to get the energy out of the Snickers uh, are much less powerful. They don't come out as quickly. It takes a long time to get the energy out of the Snickers. Whereas a stick of dynamite is very powerful, not because it has more energy, but because that energy comes out in the fractions of a second. It's able to do a lot of release very, very quickly uh, and thus, you know, does what it needs to do in a short period of time. Uh, obviously two very different examples. Uh, so when you're thinking about simple machines, you're often thinking about not just kind of force, but also power. Um, do I have the ability to transition, uh, you know, whatever chemical energy quick enough in order to do what this is? So it does my maximum force or maximum power, similar concepts here. And the simple machine is going to allow me to then transition that into the form that I want. I don't get any benefits. Friction is going to come into play here, uh, and that is going to be a resistance of things moving across each other. It's, you know, the atoms rubbing against each other, interacting with one another. Uh, they want to stick, and so when you try and push things, you'll get a little bit of force back, depending on the nature of the surface, that will resist their uh, movement. And so once you're adding all these pulleys, um, you're going to get friction in there, so you are actually making a little bit more of a trade-off uh, because you're probably going to actually have to do more work or use more energy because some of it will be wasted uh, because of that friction and getting turned into heat. Uh, so with that said, have a wonderful day.